a podcast uh, with him and then I found your mm -hmm. channel and I started watching some of your videos and I was like wow there is so much so much information here dear karate tube Germany friends the podcast that you are about to see is between my karate teacher Jürgen Meyer from Germany and Beijing based psychology teacher Minea Semandan who reached out for him for an interview about his karate life experience. Mr. Simandan is a Romanian-born certified positive psychology coach. He has been living in Asia since 2002 and now lives and works in Beijing, China. He has some background in martial arts. He trained in several martial arts, including Aikido, Judo, Muay Thai and even Shotokan Karate. He used to be a competitive archer for many years having participated at many international and regional Thai archery championships, including the World Archery Cup in Shanghai, the World Indoor Archery Cup in Singapore and the Asian Grand Prix held in Bangkok. In Beijing in 2018, he opened his own archery club, as well as continuing on his martial arts journey. He's the host and producer of Crossroads Psychology Video Podcast. Enjoy this podcast. I'm Vojko Michnia, signing in from Beijing. In this episode, we will talk about karate and self-defense. I'm joined today by Jürgen Meyer. Jürgen Meyer is a seven-dan Shotokan karate instructor from Germany, who has been practicing martial arts since 1978. That is the year I was born. From 1983 onwards, He's been running his own karate clubs and by now he's trained three generations of students. He is also a coach, a weapon specialist and a speaker who promotes karate to the world. Thank you Jürgen for agreeing to be on my podcast. You develop uh, a tough body, explosive techniques. Also, in a real situation, I think karate is at the best. Normally, I said it to Sebastian, I say when somebody asks me what is better, karate, aikido, boxing, or anything like that, I always said my the old years, the better man is better. Right. The better trade, the mentally stronger yes. person is better. So uh, it's, it depends not on the system, but uh, karate as a system is really very good if you train it in an old-fashioned way, if you build your fists to real weapons, if you use techniques who are not allowed in other sports. Mm. Uh, no, I'm a karate master, I say self-defense karate is very, very good. Right. And I think the, the conditioning aspect in karate is also very fascinating. Uh, two years ago, before the <coughs> pandemic, I was in Okinawa and I went to a few museums and obviously I went to the Karate Federation and checked out so some of their uh, resources. And they had a museum where you could pick up the jars to walk around or to walk I in the... It's a pre prefectural museum. Yes. And outside, outside the building, you see some holes from the shots from the Second World War. Correct, correct. I, I think was in this building. We went to the same place. And trying to pick up those jars and do a few steps, you realize that it will strengthen your, your, your fingers and your wrist and your forearms, like, incredibly. And for a while, I returned to Beijing and I was carrying water bottles in my... Uh, in my wrist to, to help me with my pull in your grip. right to, to help me with my pull up game. So let's look at self defense in general, maybe karate in particular, from a few aspects. I'm thinking of mindset because you mentioned mindset. I'm thinking of training because I've seen some of your videos on YouTube and they are fascinating how now in time of COVID you train your students in the forest, which is like going so traditionally back yes. in time. And also maybe we talk about the awareness, situational awareness, once you have some 
some karate skills or self-defense skills. So, do you think it's a good plan to start? Uh, now you have taken me at my inner core. Uh, I tell you my foundation. I'm a strong believer of the four pillars of sport. Four pillars. Did you ever heard it? Do you have it? I, I'm not sure what you mean, but please tell me. The first pillar is the body and the conditioning of the body. Uh, so you, you have a certain height, you have a certain weight, you have a certain age. Um, you build up your strength, your speed, your endurance, your flexibility. This is the first part, the first pillar. The second part are your motor skills. This is the technical side. How is your punch? How is your kick? How is your backstroke if you are a swimmer? Uh, the third one is, the third pillar is uh, tactical. And this is the weakest side in my experience in the karate world. Uh, and tactics are more important than technique or uh, physics. So what are your tactical knowledge? What do you know about countering? attacking at an angle, a short attack, a long attack, uh, you name it. It's not the technical side, it's a tactical knowledge and then the ability, the skills to apply it in a real situation with different techniques. A counter with a bunch, with a front hand, with a back hand. A counter with a mawashi giri, with a dolly or chaki, with a roundhouse kick. And the force Pillow, maybe also the important thing is mindset, is psychology, your special field. Has he willpower? Has he resilience? How is his motivation not to begin a fight? This motivation to go on after two, three, four, five, six fights. Uh, what is his social environment? Uh, get he. Um, support from his uh, parents or brothers and sisters this is a big field and so often i i had talents uh, very good movement in kata not only comedy in kata and then was this tournament day and everything was over mm. she was crying in the corner of the hall couldn't move couldn't move was paralyzed right so i do believe that Martial arts in general and <coughs> the practice of sports creates a whole being if someone is dedicated to, to the practice. So how, how can karate help the practitioner develop a winning mindset or a fighter's mindset? You just mentioned how you can crash under pressure when the day of the competition comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just crash. And here I'm not referring to like becoming or being a bully, but rather to mental toughness yeah. for, for your own sake, not to go and beat up someone. How can we build a winning mindset, a fighter's mindset? Uh, for me, it's very easy. Uh, you can call me your old style uh, karate trainer. It's like a soldier. You have to be preparing for a battleground where he can lose his uh, his life, where he has to take lives. So it must be hard. You cannot um, be a tough fighter if you only watch TV the whole day. So the training must be tough. Uh, it's blood, sweat and tears, literally blood, sweat and tears. And many, many people uh, uh, in our society and the Western civilization drop out. But you cannot afford it if you want uh, to get a world champion or to have a real life, life threatened experience. So uh, not only training two times a week, because your open end is training uh, six times a week. Um, be hard to yourself, be hard to your partners, in compliance with values, of course. I don't want a, a stupid, brutal brawler. I want a very clever, intelligent, with values, uh, um, human being. And that's a way for uh, 
a strong character for self-confidence. Ja, jetzt kommt es zum Abschied. Ich bringe ein Auto und zum Flugzeug zum Uchak. Los, <lacht> Hi. Thank you.